wonderful day and welcome. My name is Seth and we're gonna take a look today at another weapon or the weapon guide that wants at the frontier and featuring a weapon that is one of my favorites because it is modeled after a traditional weapon style or weapon of the Japanese culture, the Tana. The weapon of choice for samurais, also referred commonly known in the modern ages as the weep stick. Yeah, I'm talking about that weapon, the longsword. If we were to categorize weapons in Monster Hunter Frontier, I guess the longsword is more of a niche mix between the faster style combat weapons as an as a dual sword and the great sword which we covered already in the video, so we need to take a closer look at this weapon because there's some stuff to it. One reason why it's so popular is the appearance. It is a long sword. It makes you look like an edgy sword master from an anime movie or whatever. And everyone feels great about that. The edge dripping is uh, off the charts. But it is also pretty easy to get into this weapon. And it offers like, as I said, a mixed niche style between like faster based combat, not too fast, some good like long reach on like your tanks and the potential to boot like out some pretty good damage but more likely like the dual sword this weapon has some resource management and buffs applied to it which you need to manage so it is not as easy to master the weapon but also not too difficult but we're gonna get into that so we're gonna take a look at the earth style of the weapon first of course so i'm gonna see you all in the quest okay here we are now inside of the white lake map which is uh, a prettier take on the Monster Hunter Desert layout from Frontier. And I do like this map more than the normal desert. But again, it's like really small one. I'm not sure what it is, but they decided to make some really cool maps, which are short. Maybe they try to like push the players to not spend too much time on the maps and just like be more cost efficiency in making the maps smaller anyway. It's a bummer. And I hope they somehow bring these like cool maps back in like a modern take on a bigger scale, which will be really neat. But we're here for the long sword, of course. So let's take a look at the base movement. First of all, for everyone who only watches this video, not the other weapon guides, you're like only interested in this one. On the right side of the screen, you will have a layout for an Xbox controller and a PS4 controller, which mimic my input in real time. So you can see visualized uh, what I'm pressing. I will also say what I'm pressing, of course, but just to visualize it better so you can understand it easier, maybe, if you have trouble understanding my speaking, because I'm obviously not native English, you have the visualization to have an easier time. Also, for keyboard and mouse users, you simply just need to translate the whatever buttons I press on your keyboard. So if I press the dodge button on the controller, well, just figure out whatever the button is on your keyboard and then you can just translate all these buttons over to your keyboard layout and easily do the same thing there. Also to stop the lack of confusion and not say every time the Y and triangle button, B and circle button, I will refer to those as the main attack button and the side attack button. This is just to prevent the confusion and the other buttons are more coherent with each other so we don't need to talk about them with special names but it's easier for me to say main attack side attack or main and side attack instead of like repeating all the buttons right just a heads up so let's start with the main attack button which is the y or triangle button so this attack is pretty simple it's a forward overhead slash and you can do it two times in a row it moves you a little bit forward and is usually used as your main engaging tool into the combat and the bread and butter go in move this move is also used while being unsheathed, so if you um, are not started combat yet and just go directly to advance, you can just like press the main attack button to immediately go over into this attack and start combat as I said, your most basic engaging tool. Then we have the side attack button, which does a very simple stab forward and you can do this like one time. And then obviously we have the main attack and side attack button pressed simultaneously together for the fade slash. Right, so these are the your default basic attack combos. The specialty is now on the long sword that you can chain these attacks like fluently and technically endlessly together to just get some 
infinite combos going. Also, as you see when you do the um, poking, the side attack button, and then pressing the main attack button afterwards, it will do a new move, which is just an overhead slash, and it's mainly just there to keep the uh, combo going. It has different motion values, of course, as usually, so keep that in mind. But yeah, it's mainly just for that there. The Fade Slash doesn't have any iframes, but it is a repositioning tool in Frontier because Frontier said, well, let's add Fade Slash to all directions, or kind of all directions. So if you do the normal Fade Slash with main and side attack, then you just do jump backwards. That is the, I say, like the front Fade Slash. If you use this Fade Slash now together with directional input to left, right or backwards, then you do different Fade Slashes which have the same effect as the normal Fade Slash, do damage and reposition yourself with a uh, little movement. Also, these have no iframes, so keep that in mind. You don't want to use these for dodging, you want to use these to reposition yourself. And you have the left and right one, and then the backwards one and the normal Fade Slash, which just does the white slash in front of you. These are the Fade Slash variations at Frontier, and they are mainly just used to get you moving on the battlefield while keeping the flow of combat. With the chaining attacks together, of course, it is very easy to use. Because the Fade Slashes can be used after an attack, so you can just keep the combo going. You just need to keep in mind that you need to do like uh, specific attacks to keep the uh, combo going with the fate slashes because you can't do like a fate slash and then do like a normal main attack. This is not working to keep the flow going. But if you do the side attack, for example, you can just do a fate slash, side attack, and then a fate slash, side attack, a fate slash, side attack. Bum, 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 and keep going with the combos if you want to. So you can probably go crazy again. I'm not the best like combo min-maxing dude, you can ask. But I'm curious about what combos you feel like are like really good. Okay, then there's one thing we need to talk about. And that is, you see next to your sharpness on the top left under your stamina bar, that there's a new yeah resource bar popping up when you're using a long sword, and that is what we need to talk about now. This bar under the stamina bar is called the Spirit Gog and the resource management on the um, yeah long sword. It's kind of similar to the uh, dual sword true demon mode where you um, charge up a uh, resource bar and then you get something beneficial. This is the same here and I need to find some monsters to take a look at this. So, to fill up this bar, you need to attack monsters. It's simple as that. You do damage with the longsword of the monsters, this bar will fill. It depends on what attack you do, what motion value, etc. it has, and... You just need to keep attacking until it is full. You can see that the bar on the top is decreasing over time. And if you fill it up completely full, it will stay at that state for a little bit of time. And if you reach 100% it will blink up and I think this keeps for like 30 seconds going and then it will decrease afterwards. As more you attack of course and keep attacking this bar will still keep filling, filling up so it doesn't decrease as long as you are in the flow of combat. By keeping this buff up will you get a little slight damage boost which is like just 10 raw or something but it can help with DPS of course because raw damage is always good right? There's also another multiplayer that is mentioned uh, in some resources, but I'm not sure which is this referring to, but it's apparently like 12.5% increase. I'm not sure what this refers to. Um, I can't tell you, maybe it's sharpness, maybe something else. Uh, just keep in mind there's another buff, which I'm not certain of, but probably someone in the comments know what I'm talking about. But this bar is not only for show, if you have some spirit god you can use it to do a special um attack combo that is called the spirit uh, blade or the spirit slashes and it has three stages you can do it three times in a row and it's a combo that do some pretty good dps and this is probably used a lot in long sword builds you just press three times the r1 button and then you can do the uh, combo it every time it costs like uh, 
spirit uh, guard of course so you need to keep an eye on your spirit guard uh, resource to keep um this up so the trick here is that you keep like a balanced management between attacking and spirit releases and for that the game has already a solution you can do in between the spirit releases uh, other attacks and then it will save the combo state of your spirit release and you can chain it together so let's say I do one spirit attack then I do a normal attack and then I can do the second spirit release attack from the combo without resetting it completely so I don't need to start from the first spirit release again and I can do like some pretty devastating damage combo while I keeping up the spirit bar because every time I hit the monster with an attack I obviously get back spirit guard I hope I didn't explain this too confusing but this is uh, pretty much the core of it skills like focus increase like the build up of this so they are really helpful to maintaining the spirit guard like pretty high levels all the time so this is probably like a skill you want to consider using all the time on stuff like this but there's one more thing now to dead spirit gaunt and that is a frontier shenanigan edition and that is the spirit release the spirit release is exactly what it says it releases your spirit to do a devastating damage attack how it works is that the spirit release attack sucks up a percentage of the spirit god and can only activate it above a certain percentage of the god and depending how much spirit release you uh, use for this attack the stronger it will get this will also show on the animation i'm gonna show you in a bit and it goes from a simple color coding from yellow to like red etc so you know when you do the big attack and the more you put into the spirit guard of course as more damage you do but the specialty about this is now that on top of that you can increase the damage on this spirit release even further if you do the normal spirit attacks beforehand so to get the maximum out of this attack you want to use all three spirit slash combos like i showed you all three of them and then do the spirit release afterwards inside of the combo like you don't want to like wait you want to do this in one swoop animation and to do this you need again resource management this uh spirit guard to do the spirit release you simply just need to hold the r1 button whether you normally won't uh, use the uh, spirit slash with but if you're holding it you go into the spirit uh, release and you need at least 50 percent for the first uh, damage increase on this like the first tier then you need um, on the second one 80 percent and 100 percent on the max one Okay, to simply reach this comp this max damage on combining these two together is um, the default version to this. Maybe you come up with like some smarter way, but this is like the default version to do it. You basically do a spirit slash, and after the spirit slash, you do a fate slash to the left or right. That is important because the um, normal fate slash and the fate slash where you press backwards obviously are combo finishers and get you out of the combo flow which you need to save the spirit slash attack to go to the next one right so what you want to do is spirit slash then a fade slash to left or right and then a normal attack and then another spirit slash and you want to keep repeating this for the third one and after the third one you want to do a spirit release the, the most important thing here is only that you hitting this attacks in between that's why this is like a bit tricky with positioning but if you pull this off you have the max amount of damage you get the 30 percent increase from all three spirit slashes going into the spirit release and you get the max damage boost from the 100 percent use spirit god oh, it's a bit tricky i know and pretty hard to explain but this is the gist of it you want to have like the max output so just keep hitting in between the spirit slashes use all the spirit slashes spirit release on 100 for the max damage obviously you can do it at any time you don't need 100 percent as long as you have at least 50 percent but this is the max dps combo you can get with this Whew. but this is the start of the long sword the earth style and we can swap over to the heaven style and see what's going on with that
Alright, back with our Shovel Knight cosplay here and the Heaven Style equipped. We are back and this will be quick and dirty because there's only one change in Heaven Style on Longsword and that is the Fate Slash is gone. But now you're thinking, what? But this was a really good movement option, I liked it. Why will this be gone? Well, because it's replaced with a proper dodging method now and at the same time a method that lets you stay aggressively in the combat and that is the evade slash you can access it exactly like you want access the um fade slash with the main and side attack button pressed at the same time together and yes this is exactly what it says it costs stamina and is a dodge the iframes however on this are very tight you can use this to stay in the combat because you can use this after any attack you will stay stationary and at the same time, you will be possible to dodge an attack and stay in combat. So you can play very aggressively and stay at the monster's literary face cheeks while dodging its attacks and keep the DPS going. Fade Slash is nothing against this. You want Spirit Release, you want Spirit Guard in a thick combo while maintaining your safety net of dodging. Well, if you master the iframes on this move, oh, I can tell you the satisfaction dodging and move with this is very good because the iframes are very tight and it's not easy to master. Trust me, I tried a lot of times where I tried to dodge with this and I got destroyed. But the times when I actually hit that iframes, oh, the satisfaction is off the charts. <laughs> it is a very cool addition and very useful. But this is the only addition, so yeah, we can just go over to Stormstyle directly. Okay, we're back with Stormstyle now, and just like Heavenstyle, there's one additional change. And other than that, it has the exact same moveset than Heavenstyle, and Heavenstyle has obviously the exact same moveset than Earthstyle. So first of all, obviously, there's no Fate Slash, you keep the... Evade Slash still from the Heaven Style change, but now additionally the Trust, the side attack button Trust Forward is gone now and replaced with a new mechanic, the Pierce, which is a multi-hitting forward attack and can be influenced by the Spirit God. So if you go over to this uh, up to monster here and then do the attack, you can see it's a multi-hit. So it's really good to like get your spirit gone a bit up because it can multi-hit the monster. It also moves you a little bit forward so it can be used for repositioning slightly. But the additional effect from the spirit god now is you can do a way stronger version if you have 100% spirit god like me now. So if you have 100 Spirit God, then you can charge this up to do a way stronger pierce. It takes a moment, but it does way more damage than the normal pierce. But this only works if you have 100%. If you have like Spirit God, like me still, and want to do that move, you can't. You need to have 100%, otherwise you can't charge up the uh, side attack button at all. Even if you hold the side attack button, it does nothing. Also, one thing I probably forgot to mention is, uh, yeah. So, the spirit slashes, I'm, I'm making this a bad habit, dude. But the uh, spirit slashes can't be and the spirit release down the bounds of monster, like monster skin. So, it, that is something very important to notice for people who are like, getting into the weapons. And it will help tremendously. The um, Pierce, this like Pierce stab, does bounce off, but the strong version, the one that you can charge up, does not bounce. So, I needed to <laughs> mention this, because yeah. Oh yeah, one important, very important thing I actually forgot to mention that I have in style is that you can still do the Fate Slashes to left and right inside of the Spirit like Slash combo. You know, you have the Spirit Slash combo with the R1 attack button three times, right? And it saves the attacks. Well, if you do uh, the side attack button with the directional input while doing being in a Spirit uh, Slash combo, then you can still use this um, yeah, repositioning 
uh, fade slash to left and right only though uh, to keep the um, spirit um, slash combo going to go into over into the spirit release like max combo thing right so i that is something very important i forgot to mention and i apologize uh, you have this here in the heaven they have an end storm style so the fate slash is technically gone but one part of it is still remaining to keep up this like max combo thing the people on the front development team were like yo spirit release will be useless without that so we need to have it and so they kept it in there you can only do it inside of the spirit combo so if i do now like a normal attack and try to do the like uh right the sidestep evade slash to the left or right then it just doesn't work no matter how much direction input i do but if i start the spirit slash combo and then do a sidestep a directional input side attack button then it works just fine and of course for all three stages of the spirit slash combo so very important i'm sorry i uh forgot to mention this and i hope people who saw the heaven style still see this and uh i try to keep in mind something like this in the next uh video sorry right but this is all to storm star it's an upgrade to heaven style technically with the change of having no trust but to be honest the ps is technically a better trust just multi-hitting right so let's go over to extreme start shall we okay back with the extreme style and now stuff is getting very juicy for a lot of reasons first of all the extreme style is uh well storm style but uh, more it is uh, doing the same stuff storm style does the exact same moveset with additions and changes so as a change we have that you can do the uh, normal trust attack from earth style and uh, heaven style now again if you do a forward input while doing the stab so normally if you're just standing like this without any uh, directional input then you can just do the uh, new piercing attack right but if you do now a forward um input you can do the normal like forward thrust from earth and heaven style so they incorporated this attack back other than that it's literally storm style but we have a few more things first of all extreme style for anyone who does now is a high mobility um, move or style that allows you to sprint like this where you move sta where you use stamina to run faster while having your weapon out which you normally can't do this looks like this you just need to simply double tap the directional input forward and the movement speed you have for this is depending on how heavy your weapon is if you have a hammer or a lance then you will run slower than someone with a long sword or sns right in addition to the extreme like running we're just gonna call it extreme sprinting or whatever you want to say to it um you can usually do special attacks while being in this mode so while running you can do attacks to just go keep the combat flow going and in the case of the long sword we have on the side attack button just the normal uppercut thing you have normally in between combos then on the main attack button we just have the normal forward overhead slash but then it gets very interesting because now we can press the r1 button while running to yeah put our weapon in the ground and do a special well slash attack this looks cool but there's also more to it if you now have some spirit gaunt in it you can charge this up to a second level to do more damage this is very interesting and very yeah unique i would say actually because i don't now any other weapon who has this and longsword just got more love in this regards and it's looking really cool it's very nice engaging tool right after doing the run and probably something you will use often you just need to keep in mind that if you have spirit gaunt you will use spirit gaunt at a certain point when using this animation so you maybe don't want to use it in this case if you want to use it for something else like the spirit release attacks right so keep that in mind 
All right, then we also have a parry mechanic now in the extreme style. Just like the Great Sword, you have like a quick parry you can use to do counter moves and yeah, stay safe from an attack. This only works in front, as usually, and is kind of like a guard point than a parry parry. You can't like do like parry every attack. There's some attacks you can't. But if you parry now, you have the option, just like the Great Sword on the Long Sword, that you can either do the side attack button or the main attack button to do a different attack, a counter attack. On the um, side attack button you saw there, you have the Strong Pierce version, actually. It is the Strong Pierce one, which doesn't, like, cost you any Spirit God. So I'm not sure if it's actually the same strength, but it is a Strong Pierce one, the one that you usually use when you charge up the um, Pierce attack on the side attack. So keep that in mind. I am just not have any numbers for it, so I'm not sure how strong it is. And then you saw before that on the main attack button you have a teleport slash which can be directional inputted so you can teleport to a complete different position behind you while parrying. So as you see here if you press the main attack button after parrying an attack then you can do a teleport slash. It moves you a good chunk forward and you for example if there's a monster insta charging at you like a spinas right. And you can just use this teleport slash to hit him while he's running away from you, do some damage, and then chasing him and keeping up with him on top of it to just keep the flow of combat going. It's really nice, it's one of my favorite moves, but the special thing now is that you want to parry because of the secondary bar. You see the secondary bar filling up the entire time under my spirit god. This bar functions like the spirit god normally, but it has some kinks to it. First of all, it fills up with attacks and parries just like Spirit God. But it only has a real function when you fill it completely up. So if we now parry, this bar will fill faster up than using attacks. So parries are very important for that bar to get it upwards and it will change to white if it's completely full. Done after filling up. There we go. So now we have it full. This bar only fills up though, like the Spirit God, when you have your weapon unsheathed like I do right now. As soon as you sheath your weapon, this bar will deplete to zero and reset. So you need to stay in combat and have your weapon out, play the riskier way without using any items, transcend or anything if you want to get this attack going. And what it does when you have this entire bar full you get access to a massive damaging attack, the strongest attack on the LS has when this bar is full. So if you press now select when this bar is full, you're gonna do a very anime looking attack. And this is the strongest attack the LS has. As you saw there, he does like a, a swipe animation to the left and normally the this attack would still explode at the end. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on like small monsters and only on like uh, big monsters, which I don't have right now here. Like something like Abdunov doesn't count, I'm pretty sure. But after this attack, the bar will deplete to zero again and you will need to refill it again to do this attack. But it is very strong and hurts a lot. So I can show you now what happens if you sheath your weapon away when you have this bar ready before using it. Bam. Gone. Resets. And you need to refill it from the beginning. So you need to stay in combat and they want you to battle the monster without like going back to your safety or healing or anything if you want to pull off this uh, attack. So it is a rewarding attack you get for staying aggressive and playing like pretty carefully. And the other thing is when you use spirit release on your weapon, then you not only use your spirit god as you normally would, you also gonna use the secondary bar too. So you need to choose when to do spirit release when it is worth it for you because as soon as you use it, the secondary bar will also deplete together with the spirit release. So you need to make a choice when to use what attack and yeah, it's really up to your playstyle, but goddamn, this attack is one of the most 
fantastic looking attacks ever. And it's really worth the effort to getting there. But this is it. This is the Long Sword Extreme Style and we can move on to the last section of the video, the active feature, tech skills, etc. Alright, back in the city now, let's talk about the active feature. Sigils didn't have anything specific in terms of move change, so we can ignore those. But active feature. Active feature you can see in the top left corner, where it has this red uh, symbols for the weapon types. And if they are red, this means for that weapon type, for 24 server hours, there's a special buffs and um, changes for that weapon available. So if you want to optimize something or want to have this specific buff for free, then you want to have a look out for the active features if you like try to optimize a battle or having struggle with something where you can't really use this buff. For the long sword here, we have something very simple, just like the great sword before, and that is just the spirit god. When it fills up, you usually get like 10 uh, raw damage, but now you get 40 raw damage, so you get 30 more raw with the spirit god being filled up, the attack boost. Can be pretty helpful because raw damage is always nice to have. And we're gonna move on to the tech skills. The tech skills, on the other hand, are armor skills. Compound armor skills which combine different skills into one. And the tech skills for each weapon type are specifically tailored with some base skills and then specifically tailored for this weapon type to benefit from it. So if you do specific sets for a weapon type, like longsword, hammer, these skills are probably your top priority skills you want. They have three positive ones, one negative and a hidden version, positive version, which needs some special conditions to unlock and force you to use specific equipment, which is not a good way. So this hidden version is kind of useless at this point because it just gives you sharpness plus one on uh, melee weapons. So yeah, it's something you don't really need because you're restricted to a specific gear, which is not the most ideal way. And in terms of the like compression progression, it's not really needed anymore to go that far. But the negative version usually just reduces your damage with that weapon type. So if you have the negative version, then you usually just have 20% less damage with that weapon when equipped. And the positive ones start from expert to master, and then every tech skill on the max level has some fancy name. Where in the case of Longsword, that is the Katana God. So let's look at the Expert. Expert just gives you the fencing skill when using Longswords. On the Master level, you will have 10% more damage and the fencing skill. And then on the Katana God version, the highest version, you get super high grade earplugs, 20% more damage while wielding Longswords. The fencing skill you keep, of course. The Spirit God consumption is halved. So you only use half of it for attacks that use the Spirit God. And while your Spirit God is full, you also get plus two Sharp Sword, I say here. But, well, Sharp Sword is like, a, it, because of the translation back and forth, uh, I couldn't find the exact skill. But it says Sharp Sword, so I'm assuming it's, um, so I'm assuming it, it's most likely, um, Razor Sharp plus two. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh little translation uh, issues and also on top of that as you remember i talked about um the attack buff you get right and they mentioned like a second attack buff which is like 12 percent or something um i think this is actually just a percentage modifier for the weapon attack on top of the uh, raw damage you get so instead of 15 percent or 12 percent or whatever you get you will get 25 percent so you get 10 percent more on your damage when the spirit bars fall that mystery can't be solved i guess and it's simply just damage so you see these buff can get very specific in the weapon type while maintaining some basic skills you don't need to like extra slot again anymore so you can make some pretty nice sets with this and having just multiple skills in one is just always good because then you don't hit the skill slot limit and will be fine on the way. Alright, that's it for this video. This was the longsword. I hope I somehow managed to pull this off understandable because there's some parts which can be tricky to explain. I sometimes struggle. 
So I hope you had some help with this video on Longsword, and uh, I see you in the next one. Thanks for dropping by. I love you all, and I see you in the next video. Good night. Bye bye.